Do any of you have a friend that will say something that is just totally outlandish? Like they make this crazy claim or this proclamation and you just have to like sit back and think, man, they really just said that. See, if you know anything about Jesus, he makes some outrageous God-sized claims, and rightly so. His claims are appropriate to his personhood. Now, if Briley or myself were to make such claims at, say, Volcom Skate Park or at Bad Coffee, the coffee shop, we would be scolded, and for a good reason. You see, we don't have the authority that Christ had, Christ proclaiming these things as he himself is God. And you see, God himself proclaims that you are hungry until you have had your fill in me. And it's not like in the same sense, like, oh, you haven't lived until you've tried Hiro Nori Ramen. No, it literally is, you haven't lived. So what Jesus is saying is, let me bring you to true life, to truly living. Welcome to real life, to true satisfaction in Christ Jesus the bread of life. Continuing on in our Whom Jesus Loves series, we're going to be studying out of John chapter 6, verses 35 through 51, and this is God's word. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me and still do not believe. All whom the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. At this, the Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How then can he say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. That is good news. One more time, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which people may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So Jesus, being God, declares, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry or thirsty. And this metaphor is stated because we need food to survive. We can't just look at a picture of food and be like, "Mm, I am stuffed. No, we need to have food to survive, continually go back to food. And if you're like me, every hour or two I need a snack, and every couple of hours I am on to my next meal. And you see, just as we need food to survive, so do we need the life and love of Christ to truly live today and live into eternity through his graciously given love. And you see, this love is so freely extended to us for all who desire to receive it. And notice it's receive it. It's never forced upon us because perfect love does not force itself upon another. I don't know why I had a little accent when I said upon, upon another. Not like in 2014, when maybe some of you remember this, but the band U2 came out with a new album and they thought it would be very cool, very cool stuff of them to download that album on every iPhone user's phone. And they're probably like, man, this is going to be so sick. Like we're going to blow up even more because of that. But they got the opposite result. They were totally roasted about that because people received the album whether they wanted it or not. And Christ does not do that. 
He makes himself available for us to receive him, never forces himself upon us, that we may taste true life, that we may never be spiritually hungry again. For we are all the time. You might not know exactly what that means, and I'm going to give you a little explanation of it. It's this innate feeling that we have to be fulfilled, this feeling that all of us have, this craving for satisfaction. And that's where we're seeking fulfillment in attention. That's where that comes in. Or seeking fulfillment from social media or fulfillment from achievements. And you see, these don't have to be bad things. They're not. However, they will never truly satisfy our spiritual hunger. That can only be satisfied in the love of Jesus Christ. And this isn't new news to God's people that God desires to satisfy them. Jesus refers to the Exodus when God gave the Israelites manna from the sky. Manna, which literally means, what is it? Like, it like came from the sky and they're like, what is it? I will call it, what is it? And that is the creativity of our ancient Israelite ancestors. But you see, the difference between us and them is that they got hungry again afterward. They were eagerly awaiting their next meal. You see, Jesus uses this metaphor and is saying to us that when we eat his bread, we receive his salvation, we will live forever. We will never be spiritually hungry again as we are in Christ. Is that good news? Come on, I need, I need some amens. Is that good news? You need to shoot me a text or an email saying amen to that, Austin. Yes. You see, Jesus has come down in human flesh to be with his people, and now we will always be spiritually satisfied while we're in him as we continually return to God, being covered by his grace. And though we're going to die, we will live on in the kingdom of God forever as a result of Jesus being our bread of life. Now, what does it look like to take in this bread? Be with God. You see, right now, Americans are finding out how little control they have over their lives during this pandemic when everything is going haywire. You see, in actuality, we only have 15% of the control over our lives. 15%. And what many Americans are doing right now to have a sense of control is loading up on the news, reading reports, seeing what to do, what not to do, all for the sake of feeling like they have some control. And being prepared for this stuff is good, but this sense of control it's not going to happen. We're not going to have this control. This, and this lack of control amongst, amongst many other lacks is going to make people go crazy, be never truly content. And for us today, we get this invitation to be content, this invitation to be satisfied. And it is from the bread of life. So I want to urge you, church, brothers and sisters, to be with God. And this isn't in the sense of be with God so that you're good. No, you're already good. Jesus made sure of that. There's nothing you can do on your own to be good before God. But us being with God realigns ourselves with love. It brings us back to the Garden of Eden, this perfect, constant union with God, this relationship with him. So I want to urge you to be with God and receive the satisfaction that your heart is yearning for. I want to revisit a point that I said at the beginning, that God himself proclaims that you are hungry till you've had your fill in me. So may you go to God for that fill. And as you do, may you be so reminded that you are loved by him as you are the disciple whom Jesus loves. To end, I'd love it if you can extend out your hands in a posture receiving as I pray a blessing over you. This is out of Psalm chapter 94, verses 18 through 19. When I thought my foot slips, your steadfast love, O Lord, held me up. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations, which means your comforts, cheer my soul. So Jesus, in this time where there's so much hunger within us, there's a lack of control, there's a lack of contentment, restlessness, anxiety, and depression are skyrocketing. Lord, may we go to you 
as our bread of life. May we go to you for true satisfaction, for that can only be found in you. God, you are so good, you are so available to us, and you've made yourself accessible to receive, for you will never force yourself upon us. So may we, may we receive you as the bread of life. May we receive you as true life. God, you are good and we love you. Blessed be your name. Amen. Amen, church. God bless you. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week. Spend some time with the Lord. Be with God. He loves you so much and satisfaction is found in who? Him alone. God bless.